Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Mario and today we are going to unbox the all new 12.7 quart GoWise USA air fryer oven. So stick around. Before we get started in this video, I just want to point out that this air fryer was bought and paid for by me. This is not a sponsored event. That being said, let's get to it. I have the box out for my original GoWise air fryer for comparison. The new box is about an inch bigger all around. This is 12.7 quarts. This has a rotisserie in it and it comes with a ton of accessories. And now we unbox. We have a, a manual and one of the wire trays. Everything else must be in the air fryer itself. So let's take this packaging off. There it is in all its glory. Let's take off the plastic front. When you open this, it does click shut, but it's not counterbalanced. So you gotta be careful you don't drop this and maybe crack. The front is a, feels like plastic. The inside must be glass. Inside you have notches for three shells. Let's talk a little bit about that. The bottom one will most likely always be used for the drip tray. That will go right in there. You have the shallow mesh basket. I can see this being really good for fries. You can put it in there, shake it up a little bit. This can slide in of one of two locations, as with most accessories. You get two mesh trays. Easily, you can put any kind of food on there, veggies, wings, anything you want, and it'll fit in there. Here is the oven rack. As mentioned, mine came through broken. I contacted GoWise, let's see if they come through. This also will fit on either two shelves. It's a little snug as you push it in. I don't know if that's by design or maybe the tolerance of the inside dimensions, but uh, this for me would probably be limited more towards using uh, maybe for toasting bread or something like that. This is the rotisserie steak cage. Basically pinch this, you put in your steak, maybe fish, and you hinge the side in, release. Then you need to put this in the rotisserie, right side first, turn it until it goes into the rotisserie motor slot, and you place it on top of the divot there, and this will spin and cook. I wanna talk about the steak basket a little bit here, cause I think there's a, a design flaw. If you look at the steak basket, there's a little groove in the side. This groove is not deep enough. And what do I mean by that? If you look at this groove here on this, it's very thin and that can easily slip into the right side, which is not an issue. And on the left side, there's a very thin groove. However, this groove is not machined down enough. So when I go to put this in, It will not sit in that groove it just sort of sits on top i don't think it should be designed that way i think it's meant to go in that groove so this is one of my three concerns that i've sent to go wise the first two were the missing thumb screw and the broken rack this is the rotisserie rod this accessory right here will be used for many things so basically once you prep season and tie your chicken you would place this through the center you would place this on one side spear it through the chicken place this one through the other side to do the same you would tighten the thumb screws wherever they may be you would put it in the right side first spin it to get it in the motor and then you would lay it on top with this bracket as well and that would be the rotisserie mode for the chicken we're going to remove these because again, this rod is used for several things. This is the skewer rotisserie. Again, you will use this rod for this. It would have been nice if they included additional rods. You would put your choice of meat or vegetables on the rod. You place the rod through the rotisserie plates. You would place your rods and hook them on one of these and then place the other end through the hole. And again, you would put this in right side first, and then clip on the left side and put it in rotisserie mode. 
when you loosen this make sure you you keep track of these thumb screws without those you'll be in a little bit of trouble here is the rotisserie cage again you will stick the rod through the center out to the other end and this one was missing one of the thumb screws so I'd have to borrow it off one of the other pieces but you would basically put the thumb screw right in the center here you don't have to tighten it it would just keep things in line and again you would put the right side in first spin it and clip it on and this would be in one place once the once the screw is in there to hold it to open this up there's this little almost looks like an old style suitcase latch or briefcase you flip it open and you flip the top open and you put in uh, this will do popcorn so you can put popcorn seeds in here you could put uh, fries in here one thing you will always use and I'll give an example is the rotisserie tongue and basically anything that uses the rotisserie you would place in because it's going to be hot you lift up the left side mm -hmm. pull it on an angle and this will help you pull it out you could also use some uh, silicone gloves if that makes it easier and that's it for the accessories this is the optional accessory kit that I was given for free because I was a pre-order it comes with a 6.3 quart air fryer basket with a detachable handle an 8 inch bacon tray and a toasting rack so you can toast up to I think six pieces of toast this air fryer is 12.7 quarts because of the two shells and I have to be honest I don't expect to be using two shells in this uh, rotisserie air fryer I bought it mostly as an air fryer as well as a rotisserie and you have your manuals warranty cards and everything else now let's find this a new home looks like you're going away for a while that is a heck of a lot smaller so let's go through these settings we'll turn it on you can do a manual temperature and time but if we go through the menu you have fries frozen food wings pizza steak chicken fish vegetables popcorn baked potato rotisserie and you'll see the rotisserie light turned on bake dehydrate keep warm defrost and manual now if you leave this button untouched for a while it will automatically turn on I'm not sure I'm happy with the decision of that uh, you also have the light button and to turn this is also the start button so if I press the on button again it's gonna start it again I don't like the decision to make it it should be an on off button because if you want to shut it off in a hurry it should shut off we open the door it stays on not happy about that but it will turn off when you press the button again I think it's just again a learning curve but uh, let's get going and cook something and you guessed it fries will be the first thing that we cook we've got our fries cut we need to let them soak for a bit we'll be back okay we're back I'm gonna put about a tablespoon or two of extra virgin olive oil and pink Himalayan salt fresh ground pepper some garlic powder for the hell of it, I'm gonna put on some chili powder too. Never done that before. Not a lot though. I need my stomach. And some of that smoked paprika. You can flavor this any way you want. This is just how I like to do it. Let's mix this up good. Just to mention, you know, you really need to rinse the potatoes. A lot of people recommend it to get the starch out, usually about half an hour, and you wanna make sure you pat them really well dry before you start this whole process. Now, what would this be without a little friendly competition? I got my original go wise here i am going to use parchment paper because it'll be easier to clean the basket itself since it'll always be rotating i highly doubt it's going to stick so let's start putting in some fries here hand cut fries are the best by the way ever since we started hand cutting fries uh we just don't do it the store-bought ones even anymore even the orido crinkle all right so we got some here some there let's get this out of the way Let's get this into the air fryer. And let's get this into the air fryer oven. Put the air fryer basket in, you put it in, right side first, 
turn it so it goes into the groove and pop on the left side set to go there close the door we are going to use the fry setting with the rotisserie this is defaulting 430 for 15 minutes it will turn on by itself but I'll hit the start button and you can see that starting to rotate away for the go wise we are going to go the fry setting which is 400 at 20 minutes and we will start that right up and we'll see you in a little bit all right 10 minutes has passed let's take a look go wise look like they're ready to be twisted and turned all about pop that back in with the air fryer oven see if we can pause it I don't know if that was pause or not but I'm putting this arm in pull this out we'll see how it looks I'm gonna flick this open it's gonna be awfully hot but I'm gonna take a risk here These still look like they have quite a bit to go. We'll put it back in there. And start it up again. Now that was not a pause button. And the hardest part is going to try to get this back into its rotator and back on to the little spigot piece here. Might have to encourage it my finger a little bit. So this is a pain in the butt okay we're gonna have to start this back up and I'm gonna do for five minutes because that's about what was left on the other one press and hold it goes down faster that's something I just learned and we'll hit the rotisserie button and start this up and we'll be back okay we're back again and these look done nice and crispy there we go we're fried the seasoning makes it I'm not sure if uh, using that basket is the best way to make the fries. Probably better off using this that comes with it. If you happen to get the accessory kit, um, it has the air fryer basket, and that's probably going to be the way to go. One thing to point out is the GoWise air fryer is 1700 watts, the oven is 1600 watts, and it's bigger. I'm not sure if. Uh, that has something to do with it more or less than a basket that's mostly enclosed. I love fries. They're not good for you, but I love fries. Got a little bit of crispness on the outside, how I like it. Or a lot, I think. But the inside is still soft. Alright, let's take another look at the oven. Okay, this isn't even a fair fight. best I can say is don't use this rotisserie basket for french fries here they are now they look nice they're cooked extremely even compared to when you use the air fryer just shake them once because it's constantly turning in that basket they definitely cook but they don't have that crisp on them that I like but if you don't like crisp on the outside, you'll be happy with this. However, it did take about probably twice as long. And again, that's because you have that enclosed basket. So the smart thing for me to have done was to have used this basket right here to cook the fries. Or use the one that the accessory basket that came in with it. But not to be fully disappointed, let's check something out. This thing has already cooled down. I'm going to make some popcorn. That should be enough. Close this up. You got to make sure that this is clipped all the way. You got to give it that extra little push. I don't know how much I like that mechanism or not, but let's uh, put this in the air fryer. 
and the air fryer oven, I should say, and let's give it a go. If this was 100% cool, I would just do it with my hands and without this arm, but it's not. Let's close this up. Turn it on. I'm gonna go to a popcorn for 30 for 10 minutes. Now, I didn't put any oil or anything on it. There's probably some oil in that basket from the fries anyway. Let's give it a start. Let's hit that rotisserie. While this is cooking so I don't waste any more time is, I want you to see something. This is definitely a lot smaller than the Breville side to side. It's about as deep, but it is taller. So yes, you're saving counter space, but I'm realizing I'm losing something huge over the Breville here. And I'm gonna show you what. The Breville is so much shorter that I can stick the pan that came with it, my copper crisper, my egg rings, and my sieve, and they fit right on top and slide right underneath. And I cannot do that anymore. So did I really save any space? The other thing is, I believe this is a vent on top, so I don't think I'd want to put anything on top of that anyway. But this is just something we have to be aware of. I may have to treat this more like my air fryer and put it to the side like an accessory like this one right here. You can microwave a bag of popcorn in 2 minutes 45 seconds. You can get a small air pop fryer for like 20 bucks or something at Target and it'll pop it faster. I've seen people put kernels in a brown paper bag, spray a little bit of that oil, a little salt, and put it in the microwave for a short amount of time. This was gone like 15 minutes and it hardly cooked any kernels and the ones that did cook were in there so long, it, they're probably brown at this point basket cools down awfully quick I think the basket is more of a hindrance I mean I see no reason to cook popcorn in this thing they talk about it I mean I like popcorn but uh I don't see any reason for it boy this is a tough one um, fries super evenly cooked because they were spinning in that basket uh, but it did take a lot longer to cook and they weren't crisp on the outside. Popcorn, total fail. I can microwave a bag of popcorn in two minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, I can even get an air popper, like 15, 20 bucks at Target, and it'll cook it in a few minutes. And you can even throw some kernels in a brown paper bag, spray some oil and throw some salt in, fold it up, throw it in your microwave for a minute or two, and you cook that. This thing, 10, 15 minutes later, still only a few kernels popped. Uh, maybe I did something wrong, but there's no information in, about the manual of how to do it. There's just a button that says popcorn, and you just don't throw loose kernels in the oven, right? Um, I cannot recommend this right now. Will I recommend it in the future? I don't know. But I've always said from the very beginning, I will not recommend something unless I am happy with it. My GoWise air fryer that I bought over a year ago, Love it, use it every day, sometimes two day, times a day, sometimes three times a day. It's been great, it's been a power horse. The oven also very compact, narrow, so that's good for a lot of people, and I thought it would be good for me, but my Breville sits shorter and wider, and that means I could put the extra trays on top, the sieve, the silicone uh, egg rings. I cannot do that with this. So even though it's a lot smaller, it takes up more room in the end because of the accessories I can no longer store on top of it. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, that's my honest opinion. Don't run out and buy it yet. Let me run it through some more paces. I'm going to do chicken in the next video, and let's hope we get somewhere better. I waited an extra day to film the ending of this video. Um, I really want to like the air fryer oven. However, I think it has some shortcomings. The fact that, uh, you know, there's 20 presets, and you can only click forward, so if you accidentally click once, you have to go all the way back around to get to it again. The fact that the door doesn't have a counterbalance and it could come down hard, you could break the glass. I don't know if it would or not, but I think that was a design oversight. I think the fact that they didn't include additional rods was an oversight. They could have put it in there and it would have been better. Uh, I was short a thumb screw. The rack was damaged, broken. 
and uh, the top position, it was tough to get any of the accessories in or out, any of the racks or anything like that. Um, there was actually three positions. I said two. Um, the drip tray goes in the bottom, which doesn't count as a position. So there's one right above that and then two more. Since the heat and the convection fan come from the top, it I don't think it would do a good job cooking multiple layers of food like a regular convection oven. For instance, my convection oven has the fan in the back and circulates the air from forward to backwards. Where well, this is on top, so if you want to use it effectively, you would have to swap the shelves, you know, when you're flipping things to make sure everything gets enough heat. I don't think it's good enough to circulate the air completely. I haven't tested that yet, but that would be my guess based on how my oven works. I think there's a couple of other improvements that GoWise could have made. The unit does come with a nice recipe book. It has 50 recipes inside and they all look like they're pretty good. But nowhere in the manual could I find anything based on that rotisserie basket of how it would cook popcorn or what's the best uses for it. And I think that's something GoWise could or should have improved upon before releasing the product. GoWise was in contact with me about replacing a couple of parts. One of the thumb screws were missing to hold the rotisserie in place. The oven rack uh, had a broken end. And the steak basket, they put the steaks in or fish or whatever, it wasn't milled down enough on one side to fit into the V-groove. That just was kind of like a, a sitting end where the motor would spin it like on the rotisserie. So uh, they were good about it. They're sending my, me out the replacement parts. Hopefully this is not uh, a problem in the long run. So after today's unboxing and first cook, I am gonna say hold off on this air fryer oven a little bit until we can get some more information on it. There are no videos out there on this, except for the one GoWise released. I would have had my video released earlier. However, I didn't get the accessory kit and I want to include it in this first video. Anyways, I know this video was a little longer than it needed to be, but I wanted to make sure you understood my feelings about the GoWise air fryer oven. Yes, big, 12.7 quarts, but when you do use the air fryer basket, you go down to about 6.3 quarts. That's still pretty big, but I still have concerns about the way they went about certain things with the control panel, the rotisserie baskets, and so forth, and I really think in a Gen 2 product, they should really look into those types of things. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to unplug your air fryer, folks.